thank you for the very kind introduction and more so for the honor and the privilege to be able to address this graduating class. I remember it was almost exactly 40 years ago that I sat in a seat exactly like this and the world has changed a lot in the meantime. And so what I'd like to talk about today is change and what you can expect to see going forward. Everyone here has worked very hard to graduate from, uh, from, from this school and to gain admission for most of you into universities of your choice or colleges with specialist programs. Now, it might be hard to get into the university of your choice. Some might say it's even harder to get out of the university of your choice. So uh, this is one first step on the ladder. It might feel like it's the top step, but as you get off of one ladder, you now start to climb the next one. And at each stage, when you're going up this ladder, you'll be encountering new situations and new experiences, and life will be changing, and the set of experiences that you face and the challenges that you face will be changing. So if we think even about the four years, past five years that you've been here, think of what's been available on your, on your mobile device, all right? So, it used to be that, uh, that you would be able to talk to people using email, and now email is very old-fashioned, and maybe Facebook is old-fashioned, and now maybe Instagram is the thing to be using, or will there be something else that's coming next? So we should be thinking about, always be thinking about what is coming next. So as you are embracing new challenges, you might think, when you're asked to do some task in a job or to do an assignment at university or when you face some personal challenge, you may think, all right, well, what I need to do is exactly this. But when you are thinking about this, you should be thinking also, what comes next? So imagine you're driving down the, down the 401. You should not just be looking at the taillights of the car in front of you. You should be looking beyond that car and beyond that car to be thinking about what's coming next. Because the, in your life, you will be experiencing change in the world greater than any generation up till now has faced. So what you learn in school and what you learn in university is really just a, a how-to kit on how to keep learning and how to keep facing new challenges. So as an example, um, I've just returned from a trip to Asia where we met alumni from various different, uh, in various different countries, alumni of the University of Waterloo. Uh, in Hong Kong, we had about 300 alumni attend a dinner event, and, one of, and the, the speaker at this alumni event was, uh, was Joe Lee, who received a Bachelor of Mathematics in Computer Science from the University of Waterloo in about 2005. Now, he is now, he was one of the, he was the founder of the company Kwaidi, which uh, was one of the two competing companies that was sort of like Uber in, in China you know, a few years ago. And recently, Kwaidi and Didi merged to form Didi Kwaidi. And so here we have someone who's, you know, 27, 30 years old, running a $15 billion corporation based on a market that did not even exist. The idea of having on-demand car services didn't exist at the time he entered university and started studying. And so the challenges that you'll be facing and the opportunities that you'll be facing are unknowable right now. All we know is that things will be changing. Another example, think of the driverless car. That's all the rage these days. People are talking about driverless cars. Many people's thinking goes as far as thinking, thank goodness I'll be able to read my email on my telephone when I'm going to work in Toronto. Well, it goes much, much further than that. So I would encourage you, whenever thinking about change, don't just look at the next obvious step. Look beyond that. Look beyond that car that's in front of you. So. If driverless cars become very popular, what's going to happen to the capacity of our roads? Will we need more roads or will we need fewer roads? What will happen to the airline industry? So now it will no longer be 
as appealing to go and stand in line for a security check at the Toronto airport to fly to Montreal. Why, from the time you leave your house in, at home till the time you get to wherever you're going in Montreal, it might be faster to take a driverless car than to go to the airport and, and, and go through security and get your luggage and all the different waiting things there. So the driverless car will have an effect on the airline industry. How will, it, how will it affect security and border crossings and all these kinds of things? How will it affect the, you know, just, just you can, it, the, it's just up to the imagination to think how this one thing will change society. So another example would be um, the, uh, to look at the, how the price of oil is affecting various industries. So here we had the, in the airline industry again was, um, was a, it was never a big money maker. But, uh, but when the airlines became deregulated and, the, and each airline seat, the airline could only make a dollar or two on the sale of that seat and it's susceptible to wiggles in the price of oil, we see that that no longer becomes the thriving business that it once was. So it's not all about business, it's about everything from, from social developments in Canada through to what's going to happen in the family dynamics as uh, communications devices change. So, the, the, the point here is to always think about change. Don't think about the first move of what you'll be seeing, but think about what's coming next after that. So when I was in your position, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew that I was going to go to university to study to be a theoretical physicist. Well, I went and I followed some course of study and then something else caught my eye and I ended up studying, I ended up studying computer science. And so I went from being a theoretical physics student to studying computer science and now here I am serving as the Dean of the Faculty of Mathematics at a Canadian university. So just like the founder of Didi Kwaidi, who was, it was unknown what the future would hold, it's also unknown what your futures will hold, but you should have, you must have a passion and a direction and follow that. And don't just think of the obvious step of what to do right now. Be thinking about what comes after that and what comes after that. The one constant you'll be seeing in your lives is change and you must embrace it. The other constant factor that we'll be seeing is increased internationalization, which is of which is no news to this school here, one of the most international schools in, in all of Canada. But uh, no longer is it sufficient for a well-educated person at a Canadian school to, to learn about Shakespeare and Roman mythology. Well, you should also know about you know, the, the Chinese classical novels and you know, what, are, what are the important, uh, the important epics coming out of, uh, out of Scandinavia and so on. The, the world is a, a rich tapestry richer than we see with the flags here on the ceiling. And each one of these cultures and countries brings something unique and interesting and worth knowing that will be part of your continuing learning throughout life. So embracing change, welcome it, and, uh, and go forth and in, in, enjoy the changing world. Thank you. Thank you.